everybody. Welcome to Wolf Ridge and the North Shore. Thank you for joining us again. My name is Robbie. And my name is Caroline, and we'll be your naturalist today for when we explore the weather. We can't see too much from our desk though. Let's take a look around. All of you have a direct experience with weather. You've been outside in the sun, in the rain, in the snow, maybe during a thunderstorm, but what exactly is weather? For today, we're gonna to define weather as a change in the atmosphere. And it turns out that those changes in the atmosphere are actually predictable. Today, we're gonna to talk about making some observations and also using some measurements to help us track those changes. One of the simplest tools for weather forecasting is a weather rock. And personally, my favorite tool. Here's how it works. You've got your rock and you touch the rock and it's a little cool. So I think it's probably chilly outside. And then the second thing you look for is to see whether the rock is wet. It looks pretty dry, so I'd say it's probably not raining right now. And then you wanna see if it's gonna cast a shadow at all. Nothing, so I'd say it's probably cloudy. The other thing your weather rock can tell you is how windy it is. Let's see if it's moving. Yeah, I'd say we've got a, a pretty good breeze going. There are three main components that make up the weather system. And we put those together in what we call a weather triangle. And those are temperature, wind, and clouds. Robbie loves his weather rock, but I also saw him eat a banana with a sticker on it still. Let's check out some other tools we can use for our nowcast. <sighs> I guess you're gonna need a thermometer. This tells you the temperature and also works as a super cool necklace. If you don't have one of these to tell the wind speed, you can check out the Beaufort chart. Start with A and answer the questions to figure out the wind speed. In order to tell what direction the wind is coming from, you'll also need a compass, which again doubles as a necklace. You'll also use a cloud chart to match what you're seeing in the sky with the pictures. We also need to measure the pressure. And for that, we have our barometer. If you don't have one of these, you could look up the air pressure online on a weather website. I'm going to move this dial even with where the blue needle is. The blue needle measures the pressure outside. So if that changes, we'll be able to see where it was with the gold needle. One final tool you can use for completing your nowcast is this data sheet. Robbie and I are going to start our nowcast now. We're just going to go outside and check out what the weather is currently here at Wolf Ridge. You can do this too at home. All right, Carol, let's do the nowcast. Do you have the clipboard ready? Yes, I do. All righty. Uh, What's first? Wind speed. Ah, the Beaufort scale. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm on question D. Are small branches moving? Definitely. Yeah, okay, 100%. it says, if true, go to E. Are small trees uh, swaying? Yeah. Yeah, they totally yeah are. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, okay, go to F. Are large branches in motion? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, okay, maybe. we'll go to G. Are whole trees in motion? Not quite. Okay, why don't you write down 19 to 24 miles per hour. Okay, got it. Okay, Carol, what's up next? The direction the wind is coming from. Oh, nice. Why don't you grab oh. the bubbles? Nice. Here, compass. Oh, did you see that? Yeah. Okay, it looks like the wind is coming from the northwest because those bubbles are heading southeast. Cool. I'll write it down. Okay, clouds are next. All right, let's take a look at those clouds over there. Um, oh, they're looking nice and puffy. Mm -hmm, so yeah, yeah low-lying clouds. Those are probably cumulus. Sweet. Okay, let's do temperature next. All right, I've got the thermometer and it's telling me 47.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Hey, Carol. Yeah? What do you call a bear that gets stuck in the rain? What? 
a drizzly bear. Carol, that's about the end of my weather knowledge. Same here, Robbie. Time to call in our resident weather expert, Peter Hume Harris. Hello, I'm Peter Hume Harris and I'm a naturalist at Wolf Ridge. Uh, meteorologists have taught me a lot about weather over the years and I'm excited to be up here in the clouds with the wind and the temperature change. And I wanna come on down and share some of the knowledge that I got and some of the stories that I learned. Here I come. Whoa, that was a ride down, cool. Um, so back on earth here and I wanna let you know about that weather triangle again. I was up in the clouds and just was sort of thinking a lot about it. So up here at the top, we have warm and cold air and that's important driver of making the next two things in our triangle. So down here in the corner, we have clouds and those clouds form when things cool down and the water can't stay as gas anymore and it makes liquid. And then over here we have wind and the wind gets created when we have the air being squished together and the squishing kind of causes it to squirt when the warm and cold air go. Some parts of earth are hot. Some parts of earth are cold. The reason why our friendly sun out there shines unevenly across the earth and we have night and day and we have the seasons therefore we have cold spots and we have warm spots and they collide wow when i was up there i felt wind all around me it's great not as much down here wind is the movement of air the liquids and solids and gases in the atmosphere pushing through it sometimes being pulled. It happens when we have cold air and warm air that come together and collide and something has to give. And that give we call wind. So we have lots of different winds that get created on Earth. Sometimes they're down in a parking lot and sometimes they're as large as circling our whole continent. And not only that, but the globe. One of them is a jet stream that goes around the globe and it's big chunks of warm and cold air colliding. When you're listening to the morning news on the Weather Channel, you might hear a lot of talk about high and low pressure systems. But what do those mean? Let's go see Carol and find out. Let's explore more high and low pressure systems. Peter Harris shared about how different temperatures of air interacting will cause wind and clouds to form. And one way those two temperatures find each other is through a low pressure system. The atmosphere is really light above our heads and it tends to pull in different temperatures of air. And as they come together, it forms winds, clouds, rain, snow, lightning. The opposite is high pressure. The air above us is heavy, uniform in temperature, and it clears out everything. Nice sunny skies, light winds, fair weather. Hello, this machine here is gonna mimic a low and a high pressure. It's our pressure machine. Just like nature, to make this thing work, we need ingredients. I need some cold air. Awesome. I need some warm air. Perfect. I need some water. Woo! The oceans provide that. And Lake Superior and all the other lakes. I need some dust. Woo! Yeah, we got dust and in it goes. Now that we have all our ingredients, now we have to figure out how do we bring the cold and warm air together. We've got a bike pump down here and we're gonna take that pump and we're gonna put it into our cloud chamber. And we're gonna start pumping, pressuring. We're gonna get a lot of pressure in there. Uniform temperature, high pressure. And then, ba-bam, a cloud forms. Let's make it go away again by pumping in some high pressure. Bye clouds, bye wind, whoa! And there we have a cloud again, again bringing cold and warm air together in our atmosphere. Thank you, Peter, for helping us understand how clouds are formed. 
I'm learning through all of this that weather is pretty predictable when you have some simple information. The temperature is going to affect the wind and also going to affect the clouds. Now, Robbie and I are gonna start trying to predict the weather at Wolf Ridge using the information and observations we took from our Nowcast. Come join us. We're looking at the wind direction to predict the weather that's coming to Wolf Ridge in the next eight hours. We saw that it was out of the Northwest. So we're gonna expect it to get colder, drier, and probably less clouds as well in the next eight hours. A more complicated, but also more accurate method of weather forecasting is to use the pressure along with the wind direction. Our wind was coming from the Northwest, so that puts us in the first column, and our pressure had a reading of 29.5, and it was steady as well. So putting those two readings together, we will expect no change in the next 16 hours. Well, hey there folks, welcome to Wolf Ridge News on the North Shore. My name is Robbie. My name is Caroline. And we just heard a funny old story about uh, bears getting into the dumpster just down the road. Wasn't that something? Sure was. That's right. You, oh, okay. We got, oh, we got the news. We got the news, uh, the weather report coming in. Why don't we kick it over to Clint Cumulus? Yeah, thanks, Robbie. This is a Clint Cumulus out in the field. Don't know how I got up this tree, but we'll do anything for weather. Uh, based on the observations we made, it looks like things are going to be holding pretty steady for the next 16 hours for temperature and wind and the clouds. Going back to you folks in the newsroom. Hey, thanks, Clint. Just so you all know, Wolf Ridge is an official weather station for the National Weather Service, and we've been recording weather here for about 32 years. And you can record weather at your home as well, and you can do it in your nature journal. For this week in your nature journal, you can include things such as what kind of clouds you saw. You can draw the different clouds and label them if you know what type they are. Write down which direction the wind was coming from, how much wind there was, what time the sunrise was, was it cloudy or sunny throughout the day. And you can draw all of these things as well using colors in your nature journal. Thank you for joining us this week as we have explored the weather. That was a lot of fun and I learned a lot, but we've been sitting at our desk for way too long and I wanna go play with my weather rock. I wanna go get sunburned. <laughs> Let's go check out what's gonna happen next week. Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Robbie. I'm in Northern Minnesota at Wolf Ridge and this is my crib. Let's check it out. Yeah, come on in. We've got the bed right here. This is where I get my rest, eight hours, never miss a single minute. Come on over to the entertainment system. Got the television, video games, guitar, and everything in my house is set up uh, to run on the least amount of energy as possible to help decrease pollution. So why don't you join us next week to see how you can decrease the energy use in your home. is pretty awesome but Robbie also eats a cereal without milk so if you'd like to try another technique you want to take it up a level I mean Robbie does wear his hair in a bun so 